Word salad is where you misuse terms poorly, out of context, to support something when it really isn't valid. People do this all the time, in all sorts of different ways. Very often simply repeating certain complex or powerful terms can have a strong effect on a credulous audience. Nature as an idea is very powerful. There are many nutritionists, many healers, many mystics who repeat the term nature or natural, making out something is a natural remedy, a natural technique, that they're a natural medium, a natural psychic, a natural healer, that flower remedies are a natural tool, that certain forces, certain existences out there are valid because they're naturally occurring. But what do they mean? They're simply throwing in filler. They're saying some kind of force or some kind of thing is in existence which they cannot demonstrate. Throwing in words like nature does not get you any closer. Nature is demonstrable. Without the demonstration of what is natural, how can you say a thing is or is not a natural phenomena? The term knowledge is also misused, where people throw around the idea of having knowledge or having ancient knowledge having higher knowledge, deeper knowledge, inner knowledge, outer knowledge. But what do they really mean by knowledge? Since they cannot demonstrate what they claim to know, how do they know that they know it? And if they do not truly know what they claim to know, how is it knowledge? The problem with the idea of knowledge is that it can be thrown around as a kind of word salad, where people say that we have this higher knowledge, this ancient knowledge, that we have this hidden knowledge, is secret knowledge. But if it's not actually something which they can confirm they know, they may as well be saying we've got ancient stories, ancient myths. It makes no real rational sense. Wisdom is thrown around also when people say they have old wisdom, ancient wisdom, alien wisdom, or whatever the case may be. Using that term over and over does not make your work more valid. Saying that you channeled the wisdom from the ancient gods, or from ancient aliens, or from any number of different sources, whether they're mystical, in some way spiritual, or in some other way more manifest, as in some ancient tablets or ancient scrolls. Wisdom is so subjective. To a Christian, perhaps Thomas Aquinas would be seen as a very wise philosopher. To non-Christians, that's going to be doubtful. When people look at the work of Christopher Hitchens, many people will say his work is very intelligent, perhaps even wise. Whereas other people who disagree with many of his perspectives would have basically have said, he's not wise at all. So wisdom is pure subjectivity, and throwing it into a conversation, into a lecture, a discussion, adds nothing. Just as with the idea of enlightenment, people talk about Eastern enlightenment, the idea of reaching the pinnacle of your potentiality. They say you reach a level of enlightenment, or there are different levels of enlightenment. But the systems vary and the ideas vary. The concept of what is enlightened, what is not enlightened, varies from guru to guru, teacher to teacher, new age expert to new age expert. And enlightenment is not exclusive to the mystical beliefs. In history, although we had Eastern Enlightenment, in the West you had the Enlightenment, which was the philosophical and scientific freedom to question and try and understand the world around us, to understand nature and move beyond pure theocracy. Over the course of centuries, that Enlightenment grew to create such things as democracy, true representative democracy, to explore different views of the world, to move beyond mere acceptance and blind faith. Whereas in the East, much of that was facing the opposite direction. Eastern enlightenment very often was a limit, not a liberation. The concept of positivity. What is positive? What is not positive? How do we gauge the positivity in philosophical terms? People very often confuse their feelings with facts. Talking to New Agers, they will say that you're being negative because you're questioning. They'll say your energy 
is weakening, that it's a negative force, that theirs is positive, and other people like them have positive energy. But what do they truly know? What do they truly say and express when they talk in these terms? The idea of saying a positive statement can simply mean that you're making a positive claim, that you're making a claim for the existence of a particular thing, some kind of phenomena, some kind of force. So in terms of positivity and negativity, you could be simply making the statement that something is or is not true. The mystical connotations of positive versus negative, as if positive charge versus negative charge in terms of energetic bodies and entities, is pure science fiction. The concept of alignment in various forms across various topics is fairly nebulous. The most basic idea is that various objects or forces or ideas somehow form a line or connection or root or link or whatever term you wish to express and that can include such things as the chakras, the various medians throughout the body, the planets or anything. You're not actually saying there's much to it, you're simply saying there's an alignment. A cosmic alignment might refer to a literal alignment of the stars or of the sun and the earth with the centre of the galaxy or it might simply refer to some kind of mystical idea of what is out there in the universe, seen and unseen. Very often these claims of an alignment or a connection or some kind of well, lining up of certain factors which can create a notable effect is simply a question of belief. If there was something which was demonstrable, that would be a different story. But if there isn't, it's merely a question of you using certain terms to pass on your ideas. The idea of oneness is that you reach a level of oneness with the world around you, or you reach a level of oneness within yourself that you reach oneness with the divine, or the various different divinities, or you reach a level of oneness with nature, or with any number of other forces. The idea of oneness varies between different cultures, different religions, different ideas. There are different mysticisms. There are different mystical concepts of what oneness is. And as far as I'm aware, there is no way of really quantifying what oneness is. Very often people when they term themselves as being spiritually one or removing their ego or finding inner balance or even oneness, enlightenment or whichever term they prefer, very often they're merely one argument away from being the most average, base and argumental person. People very often hide behind beliefs such as being one, being enlightened. People very often hide behind the idea of being one with nature one with life, one with the spirit world, one with their ability and their spirit guides, one in meditation, one who exists in balance, a person wishing to avoid their worst elements, certain stresses, certain angers, buries themselves in a particular view of reality and themselves to refrain from certain so-called negative actions. These ideas are very often more a question of belief and have nothing to do with reality other than how you react to it. The concept of the cosmic. The idea is, in many cases, that the cosmic or universal existence is the greater existence. Many people make claims about the nature of the cosmic truth. You have people who say they do cosmic healing. You have people who say they have cosmic consciousness. They've reached the cosmic or galactic or universal levels of existence of knowledge, of spirituality, or whatever the case may be. This again is basically filler. They have some kind of thing which they can't fully explain, or choose not to fully explain, or choose to ignore more rational explanations. They call it cosmic because it seems to be something quite expansive, quite monumental. But in actuality, the idea of calling something cosmic, or cosmic healing, or some such other word salad, is utterly meaningless. If a person was truly experiencing something on a truly monumental scale, you'd expect something more than merely a personal experience, something which could be quantified perhaps, 
something which could have some kind of greater informational meaning. In actuality, all that you have is people throwing around the idea of some kind of greater existence which they cannot truly explain in any meaningful manner. Potentiality. The idea of something being a potential thing to exist, something might potentially happen, doesn't really mean anything at all. Any number of things could be potentially true. If we don't know they're potentially possible, if we don't know they don't exist, that's to say we don't prove a negative, then something might potentially be correct. If we don't know if a thing is false, that doesn't mean it's necessarily true, it simply means you're supporting your belief with the idea of some kind of potential in the odds. In other words, if you cannot dismiss something to the absolute degree, you say there's a potentiality for something. If you can't explain something, you can say there's a potentiality, even if that term, potentiality, becomes meaningless in this context and really means, well, if you can't disprove something, there might be something. In that case, any number of ideas could be possible by their mere potential, but the potentiality of something existing is not enough to say something does exist, or even could exist. It simply means that something may exist in some way, shape or form, because we cannot disprove the vaguest of possibilities that that thing may exist. It's very often the case that people trying to prove something which is not evident will use the word science. They don't actually mean they have genuine science, something which can be tested, something which can be actually demonstrated in any meaningful way. They merely mean they're calling it a science to make it seem to be more sciencey. The idea of calling something scientific might be very appealing. The idea of saying that you have genuine science for your claims sounds very clever. Even if you've carried out no tests whatsoever, you might say that you're working with the science of spirituality. You might call your channel spirit science. You might make certain claims on a scientific level, but then when it comes down to the actual testing, you have no genuine science. You're merely misusing the term to make your beliefs seem to be more true. Word salad is where you misuse terms poorly, out of context, to support something when it really isn't valid. Very often simply repeating certain complex or powerful terms can have a strong effect on a credulous audience.